Hi, this is Mike from Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine, and this is the final test of your Singer 306K before we pack her up to ship to you. And uh, in this final test, we're going to go over how to wind the bobbin and thread the machine and how to use the various controls. <laughs> and uh, so we're going to start by winding a bobbin. Hi Pamela, uh, <laughs> I uh, filmed your video um, on the uh, travel machine that I keep in my uh, warehouse storage and um, when I went into town to do that I forgot to take a tripod with me and uh, trying to uh, make a video with a phone in one hand <laughs> is awkward and um, the video got uh, filmed in 14 separate segments that I was able to edit together kind of cobble together and into kind of a cohesive video but um, it's awkward in places and in places the camera turns sideways and the camera goes off in odd directions so uh, I'm just going to go over the basics of the controls, and you'll see it in operation um, in the video. And uh, please excuse the uh, awkwardness of the video. Um, to wind the bobbin, uh, your bobbin is in the bobbin case down here. Oh, make sure that your machine is up. Make sure your needle is up out of the bobbin. Take it out. There's a little lever on the bobbin case that uh, if you hold that while you take it out, move it around, the bobbin doesn't fall out. Kind of locks it in place. So the bobbin is already wound, but I'm going to go through the motions here. Put the uh, spool on the spool pin, go into the upper thread guide here at the top, go down to the bobbin tensioner, and up to the bobbin. The bobbin uh, has a little slot in the side, so when you slip it onto the bobbin winder, you turn the little wheel until the little keeper pin goes into the slot on the side of the bobbin, and then uh, you got a positive lock there. Uh, the thread goes on over the top, put a few winds on it to hold it in place while the thread, uh, while the uh, bobbin winds. Push the bobbin winder down against the hand wheel until the little finger drops into the bobbin. Declutch your machine by turning this chrome knob in the uh, center of the hand wheel towards you about an eighth of a turn until you feel it hit its stop. And then when you uh, uh, when you wind, the hand wheel can turn without cycling the whole machine and spin the bobbin and uh, fill it up with thread. When you're done, reclutch it by tightening that knob. Lift this little finger here and it pops the bobbin winder loose and you can take your bobbin off. put your bobbin in the bobbin case you want the thread to come off the top of the bobbin in this direction go into the little slot on the side of the bobbin and up under the leaf spring until it clicks into place then you'll feel just a little bit of drag on your thread as you pull um, when you Tip your machine back to oil the underside or to uh, change the bobbin or whatever. Uh, it's easiest to take the uh, leather belt off of the big wheel at the bottom than it is to take it off the top. So just pop the belt loose on the bottom. You can lean your machine back and press that. 
get it oriented right and then push it in until it clicks into place. To thread the machine. On the video I made a terrible error that I didn't even see until I was in the editing process. Put your spool on the spool pin, go into the upper thread guide, down between the discs of the tension assembly, and there are two sets of discs. It doesn't matter which two you go between. Come all the way around until you can pick up the check spring. You have to pick it up from the top over here. Then when you pull on your thread, you'll see the check spring move. You now you got it right. The mistake I made is I let it let the thread slip out from under the this big thread guide here. It's still sewed fine for the video, but um, when you see the video, it is supposed to be under that guide and not just straight up to the uh, take-up lever, as you'll see in the video. So after you catch the checkup spring, go under the big thread guide, and then through the uh, hole in the take-up lever from right to left, go down and catch your two thread guides on the face plate, thread guide on the needle clamp, and then through the eye of the needle from front to back. Your, uh, this is your stitch length adjuster, and um, from the zero position where the uh, feed dogs don't move the fabric at all, if you go down, as you go down each little increment, your stitches your stitch length gets longer and longer and longer. So your longest stitches are all the way down. From zero going up, your stitches get longer and longer and longer, but in reverse. So and sewing in reverse is no different than sewing in forward. Uh, it's just instead of your fabric going that way, your fabric's going to move back this way. This is your stitch width lever here. And it's graduated from 0 to 5. And again, 0 is straight stitch. And as you go towards 5, your zigzag gets wider and wider and wider. Until at 5, it's at its widest. So I'm going to leave it on 0 there for straight stitch. This lever at the top here is for your needle home position. You have three choices. You can have your needle in the center position the left hand position or the right hand position you just push this little metal lever and move your needle home position to wherever you like it when you sew uh, your stitch length uh, should probably be set around 12 stitches per inch for a regular fabric regular thread and you can adjust it up and down from there depending on what you're sewing and what you want to see. The upper tension, um, the correct thread tension is set to be at about three on here. Again, for regular fabric, regular thread. Uh, you might need a little more tension for heavier fabric, a little less tension for uh, thinner fabric, but just little increments uh, up or down. Uh, your sewing foot pressure uh, clockwise is more pressure, counterclockwise is less pressure. And that's basically it. Those were the most awkward parts of the video. Um, but she's a sweet machine, so it's really nice. I think you're going to be happy with this one. So, thanks for watching and thanks for uh, supporting what we do. This is going to be awkward because I don't have my tripod with me, but we'll manage. So, put your uh, spool on the spool pin to wind the bobbin. Uh, your thread into the upper thread guide.
from the thread guide at the top, you go down to the tension device down here. Tension device for the bobbin winder. And then up to the bobbin winder. And we're going to put a couple of wraps of thread around the uh, bobbin before we uh, put it on, uh, just to hold the thread in place. Uh, put your bobbin on the bobbin winder with the thread going on over the top of the bobbin. And turn the rubber wheel until the little keeper pin on the bobbin winder goes into the slot on the side of the bobbin. And this little finger here will press your bobbin drop into the bobbin. Towards the and as the bobbin fills, it'll fix into place. the thread will push the little finger up until it, when it's full, it'll pop the bobbin winder loose and so it doesn't overfill your bobbin. Uh, declutch the machine by turning the chrome knob in the center of the hand wheel towards you a quarter turn or so till it hits its stop. See it's winding nice and evenly across there. And we're not going to fill a full bobbin. This is just a test after all. Pop the little finger up to release the bobbin winder. Reclutch your machine by tightening the knob in the center of the hand wheel. And then, yeah, this is going to be tricky because I need two hands for this. All right. Then, uh, with the thread coming off the top of the bobbin, this on this side, drop your bobbin. Get out of my way there. Drop your bobbin into the bobbin case and bring the thread up to the little slot right here on the side of the case. Then under the flat leaf spring till it clicks into place. And then you've got tension on your lower thread. Then with your bobbin facing up this way, with this little cutout at the top facing up, slip it onto the pin of the bobbin race inside the hook there. Ready to start the machine. Put your spool on the spool pin on top. Go into the big thread guide at the top. Go down. From the big thread guide, go down between the discs of the tension assembly all the way around until you can catch the check spring at the top. Go under the thread guide and up to the take-up lever. Go through the take-up lever from right to left. Make sure you don't get hung up on anything. Then catch your two thread guides here on the face plate. And, and the thread guide on the needle clamp. Then you're going to go through the needle from front towards the back. Hold your needle thread. While you turn the hand wheel towards you one full revolution and the needle will take the thread down where the hook will pick it up, wrap it around the bobbin and bring up your lower thread. Put your thread between the toes of the presser foot towards the back and you're ready to sew. Put your fabric under the needle, lower the presser foot using the lever on the back of the machine. It's a good idea, idea to hold your thread for the first stitch or two, just uh, uh, so the uh, lock stitch can lock in place and then we're ready to go. Give the, uh, give the hand wheel a little turn towards you as you, as you uh, press down on your 
treadle with your feet. Just make sure it gets going in the right direction. And oh, she's so, so sweet. This screw here locks your stitch length to whatever you've set it, whatever you've set the lever at. And then when you go to reverse, your stitches are the same length in reverse as they are in forward. But we're gonna just leave that wide open. So we have full range here. And um, so st stitch length, stitch width, needle home position. This is your upper tension. And uh, I have it adjusted so uh, the correct uh, tension for regular fabric, regular thread, is right around three on the dial there. If your stitches look a little too loose and loopy on the bottom, uh, add a little more stitch length. I mean, beg your pardon, a little more upper tension. Turn it up towards four. Usually you don't have to go very much. It's usually very small increments. Um, if your stitches seem to be too tight and they're puckering the fabric, of course, uh, let off this uh, tension a little bit. This knob up here is the pressure on your sewing foot. And depending on what you're sewing, uh, you may need a little more or a little less um, pressure uh, to uh, get a nice stitch, but that's just something you'll have to uh, get some experience with to, uh, to know how this machine responds. Uh, this is your sewing belt. Make sure that your belt, when you put it on, is in the groove of the hand wheel. There's a belt groove on the back of the hand wheel. If it's not in there, your belt's going to get stuck. It's not going to move. Um, that's irrelevant. Um, you have an access plate on the back uh, to get in to oil the parts in there. You have two screws on the top uh, that you take out to lift the top off so you can oil the oiling points in there and your face plate has a screw here that when you take that out your face plate will lift off so you can oil the uh, linkages inside there and uh, you'll also want to tip your machine back and oil the oiling points under there and um, your user manual has a, a nice uh, diagram of where the oiling points are that need to get oil. One or two drops of good sewing machine oil. Don't use WD-40 or 3M1 oil. Um, I think that's about it. Um, if you've come here from somewhere else on the internet, we are Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine and we restore vintage sewing machines. We're on Stagecoach Road out in the Coast Range of Oregon. So we are stagecoachroadsewing.com. And if you come out to our website, you'll find lots of beautiful machines. Uh, actually, we have pictures of hundreds and hundreds of machines that we've restored over the last uh, couple of decades. And uh, you'll see views from the front and back and sides and a uh, little bit of information about me each machine. And at the top of the page, you will find um, several machines that are for sale now. And uh, again, we are Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine, and uh, uh, we'll see you there.